بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم الحمد لله we are going to start the 18th bar the 18th juz um, starting from Surah Mu'minun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning he talks about the 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 believers right the, the qualities and uh, the believers what type of qualities do they have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes more on Tawheed and he also mentions this uh, different in- incidents about the Anbiya Ali Musalam أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن الله معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير منهمين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ أَفْلَحِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The mu'mineen have surely succeeded الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those mu'mineen The mu'mineen are those who are humble and sincere and uh, in their salah وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلِينَ لَغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ And those the mu'mineen are those who turn away from uh, useless talk who, uh, talks which have no benefit وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Who fulfill the act of paying zakah وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفْرُوجِ مُحَافِظُونَ And those who safeguard their uh, private parts from adultery and fornication other and except إِلَّا عَلَى أَزْوَانِ Except when it comes to their spouses and the slave woman whom they own and they will they will surely not be blamed for فَمَنِ بِتَغَى وَرَى ذَلِكَ فَوْلَاهِكُ مُنْ عَادُونَ Whoever seeks more than this then such person are they are sinners and transgressors. Those mu'mineen are those who give, uh, they, they fulfill the trust and their pledges and their promises. And those who are particular about their salah, they're ensuring that their salah is performed on time. Very with all necessary, whatever uh, is needed. And these are the inheritors. Inheritors of what? الَّذِينَ يَدِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَارِدُونَ They are the الَّذِينَ the, يَدِثُونَ the, they, they are the ones, the mu'mineen are the ones who they should inherit. Firdaus, the highest level of Jannah where they shall live forever. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةِ مِنْ طِينَ And we have certainly, definitely created man, Adam a.s. from a product of um, a clay. ثُمَّ جَعَلْ لَهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينَ And thereafter, we placed him in a safe, in a, in a, in a womb as a drop of fluid. Then we have created, then we have made the drop of fluid into a cloud of blood, then the cloud of blood into a lump of flesh, and then the flesh into bones, after which we dressed, after we uh, made the bones into, or after when we dressed the bones in flesh, meaning we covered the bones with flesh. Thereafter, then we instilled the soul into the fetus, and we made him into Another type of creation. So blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of all creators. Thereafter, after coming to this world and spending your life in this world, then after you will definitely die. Thereafter, you will surely be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah. We have certainly created even paths uh, above you, and we are never unaware of the of we are unaware of our of the creation. We send uh, stipulated quantities of water from the sky. We send stipulated quant- quantity quantities of water from the sky. Embedding it into the earth, and we are also capable of withdrawing it. 
فانشانا لكم به جنات من نخيل واعناب لكم فيها فواكه كثيره ومنها تاكلون with it the rain water we create for you orchards of date palms and grapes and in them is an abundance of fruit for you from which you eat we have also created a certain tree, the olive tree that grows from Mount Sinai, bearing oil and uh, gravy for those who wish to eat it. There is certainly a lesson for you in the animals and the livestock. We, we give you a drink, milk from their bellies, and there are many benefits for you in them, right? such as even using them for transport or carrying goods or plowing the field. And you even eat, and women had to you even eat them. And you are, you even, uh, you even carried on them when you are on land and on ships when you are uh, on water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And he says, We send Nuh alayhi salam to his nation. He told him, and he told him, Nuh alayhi salam told him, oh, My people worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no ilah, no deity for you besides him. Do you not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you not fear Allah's punishment? The kufar leaders who love fame, right? They, and they, from his nation, said to the others, He, meaning Nuh alayhi salam, is only a human like yourselves who intend to, to, to attend who wants and who intends to gain superiority over you when you follow him. Allah desire to send Nabi, he would have rather sent angels instead of human. So we have never heard of such a thing happening among our forefathers. He is but a, a man afflicted by insanity, insanity and madness. So bear with him for a little while, for, for a little longer until he dies. And until we get rid of him, basically. So after pe- preaching for, uh, to his people for 950 years, without any response from them, Nuh said, Oh my Rabb, assist me. Meaning, help me against them by destroying them. But they have because they have rejected me. So we sent revelation to him saying, construct an ark, make an ark under our supervision and revelation with our, when our command, when our punishment comes and water gushes forth from the earth. Then enter into into the ark, and a pair of every. So then, uh, except, uh, enter into the ark of uh, with a pair of every species of the creation and your family and all those who have iman, except those against whom the decree and the punishment of Allah has been passed on. And do not speak to me about those who oppress. Meaning, do not ask me to to save those who commit kufr. They will certainly be drowned. When you and those with you have boarded, when you have gone onto the ark, and then say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'll praise be to Allah who has rescued us from the oppressive nation. And say, Oh my Rabb, settle me in a blessed, blessed place, and you are surely the best of hosts. They are, they are definitely uh, ayat signs in this incident. We certainly, we definitely put people to test. Then we created another nation after them. We sent a Rasul min Hud and Salih among them who told them, Worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no deity for you besides Him. Do you not fear? The kuffar leaders from his nation who denied the meeting of the Akhra and to whom we had granted affluence and comfort in the worldly life said he, meaning Rasul, the Rasul is just a human human like yourselves who eats what you eat and he drinks and you drink what you drink. Definitely if you follow a human uh, like yourselves you will certainly be at loss, you will be ruined. Does he promise you that you will be resurrected, raised after you have died and become uh, dust and bones? Far-fetched, very far-fetched. How can this be? Is this is that what you are promised? Meaning, how can this ever be? In this is but our worldly existence. We die and live. We will never be raised again after death. 
in huwa illa rajulun iftara ala Allah kadhiba wa kadhiba wa ma nahnu lahu bi'minin he is only a man who invests who invents who makes up lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we shall never believe him qala rabbi insurni bima kadhabun he rasul the rasul finally said oh my rabb assist me against them by destroying them where they have been marked them when they have rejected me qala amma qalil la yusbihunna nadimin Allah says shortly these people will regret so according to the true promise, a, a, a scary scream, a uh, very uh, dreadful, scary dream of Jibreel sees them and reduced them to nothing, made them into nothing. And may the press of the sinful nation be far removed, meaning far from Allah's mercy. Then we then recreated numerous other nations after them right such as the people of madiam and the people of lut no nation can outstir can uh you know pass their term and they cannot survive beyond the time when they are destined to perish nor can they delay it to give them more time thereafter we send our rasul in succession meaning one after another whenever a rasul came to his nation preaching tawhid and risala they rejected him so we brought one nation after the other that was destroyed and made them uh, just uh, only to be spoken about just stories and fables may the nation without iman be distant from Allah's mercy then after many anbiya we sent, we sent Musa السلام, and his brother Harun السلام, without ayat and manifest proof we sent them to Fir'aun and his arrogant ministers but they rejected their message because we, they were proud and they were oppressive people they said should we believe in two humans like ourselves where whereas their people the bani israel are our slaves servants so they rejected the two of them and by doing so they became or became of the, those who are the destroyed ones we had certainly granted Musa السلام, the book, the Torah, so that the Bani Israel may be guided to salvation. And we beat the son of Maryam, meaning Isa السلام, and his mother, Maryam السلام, and I sign to demonstrate our power and to prove, to prove that we can do things without means and settle them on such a hill that was, uh, that was a place where there was a uh, habitable where people can uh, where, where a place where you can stay and they had water Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed to them behind us saying oh you Rasul eat from the pure good things and do good actions verily I am definitely I am aware of what you do Uh, without doubt this way of yours that uh, without doubt this way of yours is the is the one meaning one and only way to salvation I am your Rabb so fear me however instead of following the, clear, the single clear way of the Anbiya they the, the followers they split their affairs between themselves into segments. They divide into parties and depart into groups and, and fractions. Each party being, each group being content, rejoicing with, with what? Uh, bits and the beliefs of customs that they had. But in this manner, they refused to unite and, and uh, they split. And they split into many religions and each one thinking that they are on the right path. Right? That's what happened. The Ambiya came after that. These people just started making the all this. That's why we have those different type of groups and different type of, you know, um, uh, they they have their own type of uh, religion and they all spread out. They all split. So do so leave them in their ignorance for a while until that they realize. When they leave this world, so do they the kufar think that by us granting them an increase in wealth and sons, that we wish to hasten in granting them good? No, rather it is worse for them. But they fail to realize, they fail to, they fail, they fail to realize and perceive. Really, those who are fearful of the Rabb and those who believe in 
the ayat of the Rabb, all the things of the Rabb, and those who do not ascribe partners to the Rabb, all the things that they will do, and those who spend of what uh, resources and abilities and that they, they have been granted by Allah, and whose Allah, whose hearts tremble with the fear because they have to return to the Rabb. These are the people who hasten to perform good action and are uh, definitely or they race to do good. Allah SWT does not place on a soul a responsibility, a duty, except what is within its capability. Capability. We have by we have we have by us a book, record of deeds that speak the truth, and they will not be oppressed. However, the hearts, the, the hearts of the kuffar are in ignorance about this. And they have uh, they have uh, they have uh, done evil actions that they carry out and carry out besides this, meaning besides their ignorance and doubt, they have they have to answer for this. These people remain in gross and they go for shirk until the time comes when we will seize the affluent ones among them with punishment and they will suddenly plead for forgiveness. Allah will instruct the angels and tell them do not plead today. You will receive no help from us. My ad used to be recited to you, but you refused to accept and you turned away on your heels. Mustakbirin abihi samiran tahjurun. In arrogance, mocking in the Quran and end, disassociating yourselves. Afalam yadda bil qulam jamma lam yati aba hum alawwalin. Have they not pondered over this, the speech, the Quran? Or is it that uh, they refuse such a thing that has come to them, but it never came to their forefathers? Am lam yari fu rasulam fa mulam munkirun. Or have they refused to accept because they have not recognized the Rasul, causing them to reject him? Or they did, or do they refuse to accept because they say that Rasulullah Sallallahu is insane? No, none of this, none of these are the reasons for the rejection. But rather, but rather the fact is that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has brought the truth to them, and most of them dislike accepting the truth, the true Deen. If the truth uh, had, had to had to conform with their with their wishes and desires, the heavens and the earth were all within the two would be corrupted. However, we have brought we had brought their advice to them, but they ignored the advice given to them. Or is it uh, or is it that you Rasul or you Rasulullah asked for your payment from them? The payment of your Rabb is best, and he is the best of providers. Those who do not believe in Akhirah are certainly deviated from the straight path. If we have mercy on them and remove their adversities, difficulties, right, instead of being grateful to Allah and believing in Him, they will blindly plunge back into their rebellion kufur. Or even if we have mercy and remove them from the difficulty, but even then, once they, they get in the uh they feel they get comfortable, then they're gonna go back into being rebellious and uh, going back into kufur. We have surely definitely afflicted them with punishment, but they do not submit to their Rabb, nor have they humbled themselves. Until the time the time comes, right? Either in this world or akhirah, that we shall open for them a door of severe punishment, and they'll be left totally bewildered and without any hope. And it'll be too late to repent. Allah is the one who created your ears and eyes and hearts. But very few, very few of you show gratitude. It is He who Allah Subhanahu wa created, and He dispersed and He spread you out onto earth, and uh, and you will be resurrected. You all do, and uh, to Him. All will be resurrected. Is it he who gives life and death and is only because of him that the night and day alternate? Do you understand? However, they the Kufa say what their predecessors meaning have said. Meaning instead of realizing that it's too easy for Allah to bring the dead back to life, the Kufa they say that uh, what their predecessors said that they say we will be raised after we have died and become dust and bones. Our forefathers and ourselves were certainly promised the same from before, but it resurrection 
it means the resurrection is but a fable, a myth of the old men, and it cannot be true. Say to whom belongs the earth and whoever is on it, if you know, meaning who is the creator of, the, of all this. Say, soon the mushrikin will reply, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu He is the creator. Say, will you not take heed? Say uh, that why is the Rub of the uh, who is the who is the Rub of the the seven heavens and the tremendous throne? Say say Allah Subhanahu wa It all belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So will you not definitely abstain from worshiping other? Qul bi adhi malakut qul li shayma wajir wa la yudan ali in kun ta'limun say in though in whose grasp in whose control is of all things? Who is it that can offer protection from every harm while no one can provide protection against him? In kun ta'limun if you only know. Then say soon, surely they will say oh, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَنَّا تُسْحَرُونَ how, how, how have we been wit- bewitched? Right? Then they will say, oh, they will feel bad. بَلَّتِينَ أَبِ الْحَقِّ إِنَّمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ We have sent the truth of Tawheed to them. To the uh, to them, but they are certainly liars. Matahad Allah mean what I do, Mamma Kanama, Minila, neither Ladabakula, Bimaka, or Dalabad, Maraba, Subhanallah, I am my own Sifu, and Ali Mullahi, your Shahada Tifata, I am my Shifuan. Allah has not taken any son, nor, nor are there any uh, deities with him. If there were, then every Ilah would have separated his correction, uh, creation, and some would overpower the others. Allah is pure of partners, and they uh, pure of the partners. Uh, the uh, Allah wants pure from the partners that they that they ascribe to him. Arim al Ghayb, Allah is the Lord of the unseen and and also the seen. Fatara am Mashugan, He's exalted above partners that they ascribe. Or Rabbi Imma Turiyani Ma Yuadu, and Rabbi Fanat Yani Fil Qalni Walani Min. Say, O oh my Rabbi, if you happen to show me what punishment they the kuffar have been promised, Rabbi Fanat Yani Fil Qalni Walani Min. Then, O oh my Rabb, do not include me among the oppressive folks. We are certainly capable of showing you what punishment we have promised them. Resist their, resist their evil with that which with that which is best, meaning by forgiving them and, and being good to them. We know best what they ascribe. And say, Oh my Rabbi, I see your, your protection from, from evil. Uh, whispers of shayateen and oh my rabbi I seek protection from you uh, that they approach me until the time arrives when death comes to any of them then he says oh my rabbi allow me to return to the world so that I may perform good deeds so in the, uh, in the worldly life which I have left behind never it is merely a statement that they can speak and they'll, they'll be unable to return to the world because for them is I mean, because behind them is barzakh. Barzakh basically a barrier uh, preventing the return which will remain in place until the day when uh, until the day that they are resurrected until the day of Qiyamah when the trumpet is when the trumpet is blown and neither shall there be any family's ties between them Meaning, each person will disassociate from his or her relative, freeing that their relatives may ask them for rewards, uh, which they, uh, which they need for themselves. Nor will they ask about each other. Whoever whoever skills are weighty with good deeds on the day of Qiyamah should surely be successful. And on the other hand, whoever skills are light and it's uh, and there's uh, heavy with sins, these are the ones who have put themselves. Their souls at last and shall return forever in Jahannam. Uh, the fire in the Jahannam will scorch their faces and they shall be uh, dis- disfigured there. A terrible sight. And uh, Allah will then instruct the angels to say to them, to say to them, to say to them, where my ayat, where my ayat not recited to you. But you said, but you used to reject them. They will cry, Oh my Rabb, oh our Rabb, our, our misfortune, our misfortune, our overpowered us. We were deviated with nation. Oh Rabb, remove us from here. If we ever repeat ourselves, then we must surely be oppressors. Allah will say, Remain disgraced, cursed in Jahannam, and do not speak to me.
about right don't speak to me not said your time you had your chances over now do you not remember that there was a, a group of my slave the mu'min who used to say oh rab oh our rab we have iman so forgive us and have mercy on us indeed you are the best of those who show mercy but instead of following the example you you ridiculed you laughed and you mocked at them until they made you forget to remember and worship me and they used to even laugh and mock at them. I have rewarded them. I have rewarded them today for their patience. As a result, they are certainly successful and they will therefore enter Jannah where they will live in there forever. Then he, Allah, will ask the people, How long did you stay on earth? Right? Uh, of years. How many, how many years did you stay on the earth? They will say, um, uh, they'll say we stayed only for a day or part of a day, right? But ask those who count, record, who, who, who records the, uh, the lives. Allah SWT will reply, no, you stayed only for a little while. If only you had known, although not a day or part of a day, the fact is certainly you stayed only for a little while. If only you had known this while living in the world and you would not have wasted your precious time while living in the world did you think that we have, we certainly created you uh in vain meaning without any specific purpose and that you would not return to us and answer uh, for what you did in the world but the ayat allah exalt is allah right and the truth and the true ilah there is no deity but he he's a rab of the uh, the, the glorious throne he who calls on worship other ilah, uh, other, uh, another ilah a, a deity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has no proof for it his reckoning is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact of the matter is that the kuffar will not succeed Say, oh my Rabb, forgive our sins and show mercy towards us. And definitely you are the best of those who show mercy. Yeah, we, should, we, should have, we should make this dua happen, inshallah. Oh my Rabb, forgive, forgive my sins, forgive and show mercy. And definitely you are the best of those who show, show mercy. Alhamdulillah, we finished Surah Mu'minun. Now the next Surah, uh, Surah Nur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he talks about the warning of those who slander. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the munafiqeen. They have the, the, the enmity towards the tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the... Um, uh, respect towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the beginning of the surah. But what should we, what should be done if someone uh, commits fornication or adultery in in Islamic state? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah An-Nazirlaha wa Fardnaha wa An-Nazirlaha tiha ayatim bayinatil la'alakum tadakaroon. This is a surah that we have revealed that we have ordained, in which we have revealed clear ayat, so that you may take heed. الزانية والزاني فجلدوا كل واحد منهما مئة جلدة ولا تأخذكم بها رأفة في دين الله إن كنتم صادقين إن في دين الله إن كنتم تؤمنوا بالله واليوم الآخر وليشهد عذاب وما طائفة من المؤمنين الزاني والزاني فجلدوا كل so the unmarried female and unmarried male who commit fornication should both be given a uh, hundred lashes it would um, with the, when the act of fornication, obviously, look, this is with condition. Basically, when the act of fornication is proven in a court of Sharia, and in order for fornication to be proved in the court of Sharia, it is very, very difficult unless if the married man, I mean, if the, if the sorry, unmarried man or the unmarried female who committed fornication, if they step up and if they admit, that's one way. Second way is that. Um, there has to be four witnesses who like actually see everything clearly you know like uh, as i said uh, how it's it's, uh, it's said that how they see the pen going into the ink pot right it has to be very crystal clear uh, and obviously each one will be questioned and asked about each and every detail and in history um, that was it hasn't happened like that because it's very difficult 
unless if you're open on the on the road on the streets or something and you know where it's so clear but usually um even if someone's if people they're doing it uh you can't really see if they're in a room or whatever but in sharia obviously when the act of fornication is proven in court of sharia then obviously uh they should be given 100 lashes each um and this is obviously when there's a state and there's a there's a court of law and everything right you can't do it here anything like that even if they come up let's say even if they come up uh, unmarried a man or unmarried woman they come up and they uh, let's say go to the masjid or they tell the imam or something so for them we just toba we ask for forgiveness um as because there's no law that you can uh establish over here right? so for them will be just toba but if there's a, a whole state and a, a whole country and everything then yes 100 lashes and and do not let pity for them to take hold of you with regards to Allah SWT. Me do not uh, let pity encourage you to you know uh, to lessen the penalty or to you know move them away. But if you true if you truly believe in Allah SWT, if you truly believe in Allah SWT, in Allah SWT, in Allah SWT the last day, a group of the Mu'min should witness their punishment so that so that it may remove them from fornication, right? So the whole community, right? This is uh, it's for the whole community. So socially, it uh, it prevents the community. So it's a lesson, right, for the people. It's not that and not that everyone sees because how bad they are now, right? And the side of Allah SWT, once they already get the punishment, they are forgiven, right? They are better than everyone. It's just that it will be a lesson for everyone that look, this is if you, this is something that we must stay away. Because adultery and fornication are, are acts right, that uh, um, smears one's character and people committing such uh, vile acts attracts others with the same sh shameless character as a result. So an adulterer marries only an adulteress or a, uh, a mushrik woman is only, uh, he can only marry and uh, um, it is only that an adulterer or a mushrik who marries an uh, adulteress. With this adultery and marriage to mushrik is forbidden for the mu'mineen. It's not for the mu'mineen. The mushrik, mushrik, okay for them. As whatever they can do, the kufar or something. But it is forbidden for the mu'mineen to marry uh, to obviously this adultery and marrying an adulteress or adulteress marrying an adulteress. No, right? So Oh, this is forbidden for the oh, haram, haram is forbidden for the mu'mineen. Or the one who marries an adulteress and marries an adulteress and marries an adulteress. As for those who slander uh, the chaste woman, we accuse them of fornication or adultery without presenting four reliable witnesses who had personally witnessed the act, then you should punish them, uh, the, the, punish them the, the, the accusers, and 80 lashes. They'll be 80 lashes and never accept their testimony in court. Their test, their, their, test, their testimony, their shahada will never be accepted ever, ever again. And these people, these people are the sinners. Right? That's just very, very scary. You can't uh, you test to even um, four people attesting against someone is very, that's a very different. And even if one, let's say, even the one misinformation, that's it. For 80 lashes on all of them, all four. All four, and none of them will their their uh, shahada, their testimony will never be accepted ever again. Right, so this is something very, very, uh, very strict. Allah SWT made it very strict. Not that okay, not uh, not everyone, a random person just goes or one or two people and just make up a story. Nope, it doesn't work. There, they'll be all integrated in different rooms, and each one will be asked about all different type of. Uh, even if they all make it up, right, there will be a question that will be asked and. Uh, once they say something wrong and it doesn't match with another person, that's it. They they will just um, all of them will get last eighty times. Except for those who repent thereafter and make uh, and, and uh, purify the wrong they did, Allah Subhanahu wa forgives such people, right? And Allah Subhanahu wa most forgiving, most merciful. Yes, Allah Subhanahu But at the same time, when this goes through court, the shahada will still not be accepted right, in court. And uh, fine if they I do tawbah and this and that, but they will get any lashes. And it's not like, okay, after doing that, oh, they'll, they'll ask for forgiveness and nothing will happen. No, okay, in terms of uh, Dhyanata and Allah, and in terms of Allah SWT, yes, Allah SWT will forgive them. Uh, but in this world, 
qada'an, meaning in this world, yes, they will have to go through that process in the 80 lashes, and their testimony will never ever be accepted, even after when they do tawbah and everything. But uh, they have that, that seal on them, basically, in this world. And the hereafter, yes, Allah SWT will forgive them, and uh, that's between them and Allah SWT. But when it comes to court, when it comes to justice, it's very, very important. Because obviously, it is... Um, uh, it's something that's a severe matter, right? So some people say, oh, but Allah SWT forgive them. So, you know, who is the court or who is the, the state to not let them uh, test her? No, because look, they, they accused a woman, right? Allah SWT says, if you accuse a woman of fornication, that's not something, it's not something you can just slide off like that, right? It's not easy to accuse someone. Because they, why did you accuse in the first place? You shouldn't have done that. So Allah SWT says those who slander their wives accuse their wives of adultery and have only themselves as witnesses paid to act up, uh, to act uh, to the act of adultery and not required four witnesses then such person should bear testimony four times with Allah SWT. So obviously there was a one sahabi uh, he he went home and uh, he found his wife um, doing adultery. So he went to us a lot. And obviously this ayah came, came down after. Before it was you have to find four witnesses. And uh, you have to have four witnesses. And if those four witnesses uh, see, then um, obviously there'll be... A, um, if it's a married, if it's someone married, obviously then the stoning. So that's where the sahabi came to us. And Rasulullah didn't reply anything. He's like, and I saw my wife doing adultery. And um, and he's like, not once, not twice, right, but more so. And Rasulullah Sallam didn't reply anything. So he's like, and so he said, you know, this, he's like, the ayat, this is the ayat. You have to, you have to bring four, four witnesses. So, and he said, even if some, if a, how, is a, how is a husband going to bring four witnesses, you know, uh, to his wife to see, to make, make people come and see his wife? He's like, when someone enters a home, he's not going to go and go, go get four witnesses and try to bring them right there at that at that time and point, what can I do? So, I mean, as well as I said about the ayah, like, look, Allah SWT revealed this ayah, there's four witnesses. If there's four witnesses, then okay, we can punish. But other than that, uh, we can't do anything. So the sahabi, he wanted a solution. Like, I'm, if I'm seeing, I can't really bring four witnesses. So then Allah SWT revealed this ayah, he said, look, those um, uh, who slander their wives or accuse their wives, and they have only themselves as witnesses to the act of adultery and uh, obviously it's not and, and required of four witnesses then such a person should bear testimony four times of Allah SWT is indeed from the truthful and you should say this four times I swear by Allah that I'm truthful in accusing her of adultery I've right? seen that I've seen that she uh, that she did adultery four times well khamisa on the fifth occasion he should invoke Allah's curse on himself if he is from the liars he should say then once that may Allah curse befall if I'm lying about her committing adultery. So by doing this, you will be exempted from the penalty for slander. So once this happened, obviously then, um, uh, punishment for committing adultery, which is stoning to death, will be uh, will be taken place, will be averted from the wife if she bears. So if she, she, if she basically says now, if she says, look, if she bears testimony four times by Allah SWT, that her husband is from amongst the liars, and she says she should say four times that I swear by Allah that he's lying about about me coming adultery. I swear by Allah that he's lying about me coming adultery four times. And then will on the fifth occasion, the fifth time, she will invoke Allah's wrath on her. Ghadab. If he meaning uh, if her husband is from the truthful, she should say once that may Allah's wrath be on me if he is truthful about me committing adultery. Right? He should say she should say that. And then after that. Right, when when both both of them do that, then they'll be ob obviously in court. Both of them will be separated. Uh, they will not live together. But let's say if the husband says and he and he she and he and the husband takes oath and everything, and the wife she can't and she doesn't go forward with it, and she doesn't, then obviously they don't have to go. Then and she accepts and she admits. Then obviously they would move. They would go on with the punishment. <laughs> If it were not for Allah's grace, favor on you and his mercy, because of which his laws cater for your needs, and for the fact that Allah is verily the most merciful and wise. 
right? Which Allah SWT has made He made it now. He made it more easy for you to abide by, right? Because before man, uh, uh, because before man would experience ex experience great difficulty, right? Like as I mentioned earlier, that it was difficult um, to bring forward witnesses to Allah SWT. He, if we're not for the grace of Allah SWT on you and His mercy. And for the fact that Allah is verily the most merciful and wise. So referring to the accusation of the of adultery that some Munafiqeen directed uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So some uh, some Munafiqin they started uh, uh, accusing, uh, they put some accusation upon uh, Aisha radiallahu anha of adultery. So referring to that, Allah SWT says, and it was indeed a hypocrite group from you that brought and started the slander, the accusation against against Aisha radiallahu anha. Do not do not regard it. I mean the accusation as a misfortune, for it was good for you. Meaning although the slander caused grief. To the Muslims and particularly to Aisha anha, obviously it was good for them because they earned tremendous reward by exercising patience and sabr and having a lesson taught to the entire ummah every one of them those who actively accused her will have his share of punishment the sin and a terrible punishment shall be for the, for the ones who, take, who took the greatest part in it right? who was the leader of the munafiqeen uh, and uh, the, whose name was obviously Abdullah bin Umay bin, Umay bin Salul. Right. So Allah saying, a terrible punishment shall be for the one who took the greatest part in it, who was Abdullah bin Umay bin Salul. They started accusing Aisha So Allah SWT obviously revealed, revealed the eye that indeed it was the Munafiqeen that they started doing this, they started slandering. And it was good for you because obviously you had you know, patience. And at the same time, obviously Allah SWT revealed the eye that, okay, no, she is free and she didn't do anything but obviously it was, it was very tough for Aisha anha because you know uh, because of all this slander and because on, on the ummah that time the sahaba radiallahu anhum and the hearing such thing about the wife of Rasulullah and uh, it wasn't easy for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi as well and so and that's what was difficult about Allah saying that no you, you it was good for you because you had uh, uh, time to make all this reward and uh, because of patience Instead of listening to the accusation and thereby giving courage to the slanders, why did the many men and women not think favorably of themselves, meaning of those who were accused when they heard about it and about the accusation? This is a clear defamation. This is a clear, uh, uh, clear, um, made up. Why, when the accusers, when uh, did not when they not present four witnesses to testify. Uh, when the, the accused did not present four witnesses to testify that they had witnessed an act of adultery, so since they didn't present, uh, when they have not presented four witnesses, uh, so they meaning why, why have they not presented four witnesses? So since they did not present four witnesses. Then those people are surely liars in Allah's sight. In and Allah humul kadi, they are surely liars. Allah fi Allah alikum marhamatuhu fi dunya wa akhirat al masir fi ma fadum fi adam nadim. If we're not for Allah's grace, your grace upon you by granting you the ability to repent and for His mercy in this world and the akhirah, a dreadful punishment, disaster would have afflicted you because of what slander you involved yourself in. If the Quran be al sinatu ma taqulu ni bi afwahi kumari sabi ilm wa tahsabu na hiyina wa huwa Allah alim. I oh, was basically, I, I forgot to mention that the reason why they started slandering uh, about Aisha radiallahu anha is because they, they were going on their own journey. Aisha radiallahu anha was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And so obviously there's a, they would carry uh, carriages at right, that time. Uh, and the carriage, the woman would be in there. So when they stopped at a place, um, so Sahabu radiallahu they put the carriage down. So, and then they moved away, obviously. They went, they went separate. They, were, they went away. So then she um, went out and she went to relieve herself. So, and then after a while, um, so the, now the, the caravan, now the, the, the group was moving on the journey. So then they, 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 the Sahabar they went. 
So they didn't even ask, you know, she's in there. They picked they picked it up. And I, I, Aisha, the law, and she was obviously young and she didn't even weigh that much. And obviously, the Sahabra was strong. So they just picked it up and they didn't realize that no one was in there. So they left and they went, they moved on forward. And so when Aisha, the law, she came back and she saw that, you know, they, like, they're gone. And you know, she was worried, you know, what happened. So, and obviously, one Sahabi, he, his duty was to check if anyone was left behind. So he would stay far back, you know, just in case anyone left behind. So that was his duty. That was his job. So, and then he saw, you know, there's um, someone, you know, left behind. And, and he's like, oh, subhanAllah, you know, what, what is this? And uh, uh, so they were going back to, um, they were going back to Medina. So, and then obviously he requested, okay, you know what? Uh, he got off the horse and he said, you know, you can ride and I'll just walk. So the entire time, obviously, it was just them two. So now when they came to Medina and it was just them two. So, um, and obviously they adopted all measures of, you know, uh, and everything. But then when they, the, obviously when they came back, the believers, nothing, no one, the Sahaba didn't have any, they didn't think anything like that. But because of those people whose heart was dirty and uh, they had uh, dirty minds and everything. So their hearts, uh, like the Munafiqeen, they started making up this slander and they started making this up and uh, it became the talk of the town in uh, the Medina so that this is where uh, things started. So that's what Allah SWT is saying that oh, they, they have surely been liars and Allah SWT says, you know, if it wasn't for the grace of upon you and for his mercy in the world in the Akhirah, a dreadful, a, a, a punishment, disaster would have afflicted you because of the slander that you were involved in yourself in. When you gossiped about the matter with your tongues and said such things with your mouth that you had no knowledge of, you thought that the matter was, you know, it was nothing. It was just light, whereas it was grave. It was a grave sin in Allah's sight. All those slandering, slandering any person is a major sin, right? That's definitely is a sin, especially worse when accusing a, a ch chaste wife of Rasulullah that's even worse when you Muslim heard about it why did you not say it is it is not appropriate for us to discuss this because we have no idea about whether it is true or not Allah is pure right? in fact this is a uh, this is a smear this is a, a made up and it was, which cannot be true because the character of, of people of people involved have always been pure Right? These people we, you always think good that no, this cannot be. Why couldn't you say that instead of you start talking about this and you know, uh, discussing about this? Allah advise you against repeating the same behavior ever again if you really are about meaning not having man. Allah clearly explained the ayat for you. Allah is all knowing the wise. There shall be an in, uh, uh, intensely painful punishment in this world and in the akhirah for those who love immor immorality, right? And um, who love immoral behavior to spread among the mu'min. Allah knows the gravity of every sin and you do not know. Therefore, you should abstain from everything that Allah forbids without questioning. You Muslims should have certainly suffered punishment if it were not for Allah's grace, favor on you by inspiring you to seek forgiveness and mercy by forgiving you. And for the fact that Allah is verily the most pardoning and most merciful. Oh, you have Iman. Do not follow the footsteps of Shaitan. Wherever, wherever follows the footsteps of Shaitan, then rarely Shaitan commands uh, the people to people to engage in immoral, indecent behavior and evil. If we're not for, for Allah's grace on you and His and His mercy, none of you would have, none of you would ever be pure from sin. But. However, Allah purifies whoever He wills from sin. And Allah says, all hearing and all knowing. So after Allah declared the innocent of Aisha and her father, Bakr and others, swore never to financially assist those Muslims who were involved in promoting the slander. So referring to this, Allah says that, that the high ranking and wealthy ones among you, like Abu Bakr should not take an oath not to spend on their relatives, the poor, 
and those who migrate in Allah's path. They should rather forgive and pardon. Do you not like to for, do not uh, do not do you not like Allah to forgive you, just as you would like Allah to forgive you for your shortcomings? So Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. Those who slander accuse of adultery, right? They're uns uh, and, uh, unsuspecting chaste mu'mineen women are certainly cursed from, then they are far from Allah's mercy. In this world and in the akhirah, they shall suffer a terrible punishment. On the day of Qiyamah, when their tongues and hands and legs will testify against them for what they did. The, on the day Allah SWT will give them the full payment punishment due to them that they will know that Allah SWT is verily the truth and the one who discloses the truth of matters. Allah concludes the discussion of slander by stating a general principle. He says, impure, evil, and unchaste women are for impure men and impure men. And, in, and for impure women, similarly pure and good and chaste women are for pure men and for and Pure men are for pure women. It is therefore impossible for Aisha Ghalan to have committed adultery because she was the wife of the purest and the most chaste human. She therefore is chaste woman. So these people accused of adultery are innocent of what the slanders uh, like, uh, the, the slanders uh, for them. Those who are accused is forgiveness and pardon and a, uh, a great reward. What is going on? A um, a bountiness reward. Therefore, those who are, who are accused is forgiveness. Allah SWT forgive. Oh, you have Iman, do not enter any home besides your own until you have acquired permission to enter from those inside and until you have greeted the inhabitants, the people living there. Therefore, greet with salam at the door and then ask for permission to enter. This is best for you to keep in mind. If you do not find anyone there, uh, then do not enter until you are permitted to enter. However, if you are told to return, then return. Do not enter. This is pure for you. Allah is aware of what you do. There's no harm in sin. If without permission you enter uh, a place where there's there's no one living in the houses that contain benefit for you, I mean public places or other places that you are allowed to use, Allah knows what you make public, what you reveal, and what you keep secret. Tell the men that they should lower their graces properly and not look at non mahram women and guard their chastity and not look or do anything that may lead to adultery or fornication. This is pure for them. Plus, what is informed of what they do. And tell them the mu'mineen woman that they should lower their gaze and not, not look at non mahram men, men with lust, and preserve their chastity, not look at or do anything that may lead to adultery or fornication. They, the women, must not expose anything that reveals their beauty, whether it is parts of the body, jewelry, or clothing. Except what becomes apparent, what becomes apparent of it, meaning the outer garment, which is obviously, which obviously cannot be concealed, right? When a woman leaves her home, and they should wear their scarves over their, um, uh, uh, their over their heads as well as their uh, chest, unlike the scarves, right? Which is like the the, the they're only just uh. It just it's a little bit it has to be it has to cover uh, their heads and the chest and everything properly and they may expose their beauty mean the face and head and arms right, and few feet Right to only to the, only to their husbands, their fathers, their fathers-in-law, their sons, the sons of their husbands, their brothers, and the sons of their brothers. Right, they mean their nephews, 
and the sons of their sisters, right? their women, meaning other Muslim women, and their female slaves, and those male servants who have no possession, meaning those men who are not mentally alert and who have no interest in women. Wait, women have nothing to fear from them and are not attracted to them. Uh, or children who are not aware of, uh, of women's private parts. I mean, the, those immature boys who are unaware of, of, um, of anything, any features of women. So they, the women, should also not strike their feet on the ground to reveal the beauties, I mean, the jewelry, the, the, on the, on the, on their, what they wear on the ankles and stuff. And that they, sh they conceal, I and mean, they should therefore walk in a manner that does not cause the jewelry to jingle and attract attention, right? Find a home that's okay, but not outside. Uh, and, and you should all collectively and collectively do you repent to Allah SWT, or you move, or you move, so that you may succeed and prosper in both worlds. So we should be very careful, obviously Allah SWT said for both men and women to lower their gaze and especially Allah SWT talks about more about you know covering the head and uh, different parts, obviously the body and everything and should not uh, expose obviously the beauty, the face. Um, uh, the, the head and arms and everything only except to the specific people, the individuals Allah SWT mentioned, right? Husband, obviously, fathers, father-in-law, and then their sons, obviously, or, you know, the son, uh, the sons of their husband or their nephews. Get the unmarried ones among you married as well as those slave men and slave women who are righteous and capable of fulfilling the rights of marriage. Yeah, those who are unmarried among you, get them married. Right? Allah SWT is saying this. Not that, you know, you have people, you have some people that's custom that 30, 30, 40 years old, uh, they're not getting them married, right? That's not right. And that's where problems come in. Right? There's problems. So that shouldn't be the case. But rather, Get them married off if you can get, especially um, the daughters or, you know, obviously both the sons and daughters. If you have the capability, then you should do so. Allah SWT, he, then Allah SWT, he will make each of them independent, meaning free from needing financial assistance from others. That if they are poor before marriage, then Allah SWT will make each of them independent. Free from needing financial assistance from others by his grace after marriage. Allah is, and obviously this is and Allah's mother is ample of me means wise and alim and all knowing. Right? So this is um those who are married. Um they could I guess they can attest to this, right? Though who are um before marriage or single. Um they don't have that much, but once they get married and Allah SWT, they have children, they have, you know, through that Allah SWT opens their sustenance. And, you know, Allah SWT is saying, if you're poor, if you don't have much money, then get married. Hey, that's the solution. You want the more sustenance, get married. Allah SWT will provide. Yes, well, Allah SWT says, get, get, before, as I mentioned, Allah SWT says, they get the unmarried ones married when they are of age. If they are, if they are of age and they are um, mature and everything, you should get them married. People nowadays, they start restricting, or oh, it has to be this, or, you know, he or she has to do this, or this, that. You don't make conditions where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a soul, did not make any conditions, right? Allah is a soul, did not make any conditions. Who are you to make these type of conditions? Just get them married off because if they fall into sin, it's not going to go to them. It's going to go to the parents, right? If you're not marrying them off, Allah SWT doesn't ask you on the day of Qiyamah. Allah doesn't ask you, look, because, and obviously in the time we're living in, it's even worse. Right? The situation is worse, but even now the time is worse. But I don't understand, even at the time we're living in, people understanding is also a different too. Instead of marrying them off early, they married them off late. And it's all because there's no fear of Allah SWT that Allah SWT will ask them, will ask the parents. But this is very, very something that's very um, 
serious uh, because in the time we're living in, things are very yes, uh, it's difficult and there's a lot of fitna out there. But if you delay, you know that there your children have come of age, right? The daughters or the sons that come of age, get them married. Don't start making up all these different type of uh, conditions. Who are you to make this, make all these conditions, right? Don't don't try to think that you're someone big or anything. Allah SWT said, okay, just get them married off. Through marriage, Allah SWT is saying that we will give them sustenance. Right? Allah is saying this, who are we to object? Right? It shouldn't be such that you know, the time we're living in is uh, very bad. Right? Instead of delaying, get them married off quick. And because if we delay and, and, and any sins happen, all that, you're just getting free sins without even doing anything. Let's say you're praying all your namaz and everything, and mashallah, you're the best Muslim in the community, everything. But you're getting free sins if, if they're falling into sin. But some people are like, oh, you know, my son, my daughter, you know, they're the most righteous, right? They're the most righteous. No, don't put your, you're thinking that, but you, you, there's a possibility they can fall into sin. Right? Once you get them right off, okay, then you, your responsibility is done. Don't leave that hanging. Don't leave that hanging on your shoulders. Uh, don't don't leave that uh, that responsibility of that big. Just get over with it, and have to work in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will provide. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give, but don't say okay. No, he has to. They have to. He has to do this. She has to do this. You have to finish college, PhD. He has to become a doctor. She has to become this, that, and then after that, we'll think about marriage. And that's not the way. Wait, that's not the way how Islam teaches us, right? And because of this, what is happening? There's only problems. Only problems happening. There's not, nothing's good that's coming out of it. Yes, okay, it looks like, yeah, a person has a title on his name. So what? What is that going to do? But what's happening? Is there any good? Is uh, falling into sin? Are we going, is because that, are you going closer to Allah SWT or are you going further away? These things we have to consider, right? especially I'm talking to those people who are parents who are older, right? The, the young people out there, uh, unfortunately, uh, they're kind of more understanding, but the, the parents in these type of matters, these type of matters, uh, very, very behind and even though they're professionals and everything, but in this matter, uh, um, they're very behind, very unfortunately. And uh, we've seen this uh, many times, uh, people who are, they're, edu they're educated, professionals and everything, but it's just that in this type of matter, they don't want to listen, I guess, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and what uh, the sunnah is. But inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. وليسعف بالذين لا يجدون نكاحا حتى يغنيهم الله من فضله والذي يبتغون الكتاب مما ملكت ايمانكم فكاتب من علمتم فيهم خير واتم مما لله الذي اتاكم those who are unable meaning uh, unable who have no means to marry meaning despite uh, they have nothing right they should preserve their chastity until Allah Almighty grants them both independence through his grace and you should enter into the contract of kitaba meaning uh, a, a a contract between slave and master by which the slave has a gradually has to gradually pay the master a certain sum of money to secure his freedom basically so with those slave of yours who desire to enter into if you know have any good in them meaning if you feel that they are capable of earning then give them from allah's wealth which he has given you meaning by either reducing the amount of kitaba or writing or writing it off and some of the munafiqin were doing mean they they and do not, the way how some Munafiqin were doing, do not force your slave woman into prostitution when they wish to remain chaste. Where they wish to remain chaste, merely to, uh, to seek the, the wealth, the commodities of this world, whoever forces them into uh, to being prostitutes, then after his, uh, the the munafiqin, the, the force, Allah SWT is certainly most forgiving and most forgiving. Even after, if the munafiqin are doing it, then Allah, obviously Allah SWT will forgive the slave woman who had no option, but, uh, but Allah SWT will severely punish the master. And we have surely revealed clear ayah to you. Some incidents of those who, who, who passed before you and advise for those who have taqwa, Allah is the light, the illuminator of the heavens and the earth. The example of the brightness and the clarity of his light is like the, of, of a niche, of a niche in which there is a lamp, and the lamp is within a glass, and the glass, because of its clarity, appears to be a shining star, and the lamp lit with you know, the oil, uh, the blood, uh, with the oil, with the blessed tree of the olive, which is neither uh, easterly or westerly, meaning the sunlight 
falling on the tree is neither uh, obscured when the sun rises in the east nor when it sets in the west. The tree receives sunlight, therefore the tree receives sunlight throughout the day, making the oil pure and easily. Uh, it, uh, it makes it... Uh, uh, making the oil, it makes them the making it makes the oil pure the the oil is the result um yakad zayta yudhi wa lam tamsasu nar the oil is close to burning even though a fire does not touch it mean the light upon light nur ala nur this light upon light yahdillahu nur lin yahdillahu nur lin bihi man yasha wa yadribu allah min thani nasi wa allah bi kulli shay'in alim Allah guides to his light whoever he desires and Allah quotes example for people to guide them and Allah has knowledge of all things. In houses and masajid with Allah has commanded that they be exalted and that his name be taken in them. And then the, the man who Allah swan the guided glorify him morning and evening. Men who, men who neither trade nor uh, distract the distract from the dhikr of Allah and establish salah and pay zakah. They fear a day, may the qiyamah, when the hearts and eyes will be overturned. Allah grants them the ability to do all this so that Allah may reward them with the best of rewards for their actions and grant them an increase for, from His bounty. And Allah sustains, provides for whoever He wills without count. Without counting, the 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 deeds of the kuffar are worthless because they, they have no iman. It's like a, a uh, it's like a, on, on a barren plain land that a thirsty person thinks to be water, that thinks that there's water until he approaches it to have a drink of water and he finds nothing. Similarly, when a kafir arrives in the akhirah expecting to be rewarded for the good he did in this world. You will find no reward for him. On the contrary, when he arrives on the day of Qiyamah, you will find Allah only decision, punishment there. After which Allah SWT grants him his full punishment due to his kufr and sins. And Allah SWT is swift in reckoning. Or on the contrary, striking the example that Allah SWT's condition the, on the condition of the, the kafir is which like it is like a, a like in darkness covered with beneath a deep ocean, which is itself is dark because of the death. To add to the darkness, there covers him a wave above which is another wave, above which there is a cloud, which prevents even uh, to see from the outside light from reaching him. Darkness upon darkness. He is unable, is unable to see his own hand when he extends it before himself, and there can be no light for the one whom Allah SWT has not ordained any light. Right, for, for such people, uh, such people are destined to leave this world as kuffar. You now see that everyone in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah, including the birds with their wings spread out. Each one, each one know, knows its salah and method and the method of glorification. Allah SWT has knowledge of what you do. Allah the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and to him we shall return. You now see that Allah uh, Allah gently drives the, the cloud towards the place where he intends the rain to fall, then gathers them and stacks them in layers after which when Allah SWT decides you will see rain falling from between them then from the mount from the from the mountains uh, there's this cli this clouds in the sky and allah showers allah showers down allah he said he says uh, uh, allah SWT showers down abundantly some ice hail and snow by which he strikes whoever and whatever he wills thereby causing harm to everyone and he averts from whoever meaning he, he prevents from whoever and whatever he wills and the flash, uh, and the flash of his lightning is bright, and they can almost snatch away eyesight. Allah also changes the night and the day. And there is definitely an ayah in this to prove Allah's power for those with foresight. Allah created every creature from water of, of these, and there are some who 
crawl on their bellies, meaning such as snakes and snails and worms, etc. And there are those who walk on two legs, right, such as human beings, and those that walk on four, such as cattle, cats, and dogs, and Allah SWT creates uh, what he wills. Allah certainly also has Allah has power of everything. We have certainly revealed it clearly, explicit ayat. Allah guides wherever He was to the street path. They the 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 demands of the true man and these people are not mu'mineen but munafiqeen when they are called to Allah and his Rasul so that he may decide their dis disputes between them a party from them a group from them meaning the munafiqeen suddenly turn away refusing to accept the judgment if any of their rights are owning to or are owing to them meaning if any of the rights are owning or owing to them meaning if they stand to gain anything from his judgment they would come to him willingly eager to get what they want However, when they fear that the judgment may be passed against them, they are reluctant and they fear uh, to go and refer the matter to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is there a disease, a kufr in their hearts that prevents them from accepting the judgment of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are they doubtful about the nubu of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or do they fear that Allah and His Rasul will oppress them? Never, right? It is impossible for Allah and His Rasul to oppress anyone. The real reason for the rejection is that they are indeed oppressors and wrongdoers. And the country when the mu'mineen are called to appear before Allah and his Rasul so that he may pass judgment between them, all they say is we hear and obey and they are pleased to accept Rasulullah's judgment. And these are the successful ones. The successful ones who reach their goal and those who obey Allah and his soul, who fear Allah and do not disobey him. They the munafiqin swear uh, an oath in Allah's name and say that they are obedient to Allah and his soul. But if you command them to leave their homes, they will certainly leave their homes and tell them, do not swear on false oath. And obedience can be recognized, meaning by a person's speech and actions, right? And does not need oaths to reveal it. You can just see how a person's speech is and a person's actions. Allah is surely, in Allah is surely informed of what you do. Say, obey Allah and obey the Rasul. If they turn away, then Rasul is responsible only for what he has been entrusted with, meaning with passing on the message. And you people are responsible for what you have been entrusted with, meaning for accepting the message. And if you obey, and you will be rightly guided. And this is the rule that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this is the rule. The rule is that Rasulullah is responsible only for clear propagation and no force. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those of you who have iman and who do good actions that he will definitely make them successors of the of the on earth and of the rulers on earth, just as he has made those before them successors, and he will certainly grant them great strengths to the deen and that he has chosen for them uh, uh, and, and he will certainly replace their fear with peace on condition that they worship me and do not ascribe any pa partners to me. And those who are ungrateful after this is Definitely sinful. All matters so that mercy may be shown to you. Never think that Kufar can escape Allah's punishment on earth. In the Akhirah, their abode is Jahannam, and what an evil return will be, it will be for sure. <laughs> O oh, you who have iman, your slaves and your children who have not yet come of age must seek permission to enter your homes on three occasions. Before the Fajr Salah, right, when you remove your extra clothes to sleep. In the afternoons, I mean, after and after Aisha Salah, when you, when you go to bed for the night. These are three times of, of the privacy for you. So after 
Meaning, besides this time, there's no sin for you, you, there's no sin on yourselves or on them for not asking permission because they often come and go from your presence. So one of one from them, one from the other, meaning because people need to meet their slaves and the children, so often it will be impractical for them to ask permission all the time. So in this manner, Allah SWT says, like being Allah. Allah gave this matter. We have uh, Allah explained the ayat to you, and Allah is all knowing. So, obviously, Allah is saying three times, right? Before Fajr Salah, right? Nighttime, obviously, right before Fajr, when you, uh, when you remove your extra clothing, and uh, in the afternoon, and after Isha, when you go to bed, right? So, the, the basically, the slave or the children, right? Um, the parents, they shouldn't go into the parents' room just like that, barge in, right? They have some manners, respect. Um, but obviously, you know, throughout the day, that's what Allah says. Other times, you know, maybe the Nowadays, people have a um, obviously uh, they can lock the door and things like that. You know, you don't pick the lock. The door is locked. That's it. Don't go in. So right now, it's before there would be just a curtain. So that's why you should ask for permission, uh, especially nighttime. You shouldn't go and walk in in your parents' room. Uh, but this is uh, this is how it should be done. When your children come of age, when they reach puberty, and even just before that, they should eat, seek permission at all times to enter your room, just as those before them, meaning others who would, uh, who, those who had come of age, meaning seek permission. Where when you're in this manner, Allah SWT explains the ayat, and Allah SWT is all knowing the wise, right? Obviously, when the children are very small, they're running around, right? You can't tell a three-year-old to come and ask for permission, right? You know, but obviously when they're about to come of age, so Allah saying that you should uh, teach them, you should tell them that they should, you know, that they should uh, seek permission, and because the way how the one those who are already mature and they're already they're grown up, they know that okay, they should ask for permission. So same way when the children come of age, they should start asking for permission, and they should have that uh, upbringing. There is no sin on those women who are sitting at home because of old age and have lost all hope of marriage if they remove their uh, excessive clothing on condition that they do not expose their the charms there by attracting men. However, it is best if they abstain from this and continue to cover themselves as young women do. Allah is all hearing and all knowing. And he knows your intention and your actions, right? So this is obviously those very, very old, you know, the, the old women, those, uh, so they, they don't have to, you know, cover obviously their face or whatever. Um, but uh, it is best, Allah says, when you start, if you do, if you, if you if they abstain from this, uh, it's better. So they should cover, but it, let's say if they don't, and you know, because they're really old and they know that, okay, no one's going to get attracted, but it shouldn't be such that, okay, mashallah, you know, you like, yes, you know, I'm very old, so I don't have to cover. And then, mashallah, putting on the blush, makeup, and everything, and try to, you know, make yourself, you know, twenty years younger. Obviously, that is haram. That's that 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 shouldn't be done. ليس على ما حرج ولا على العرج حرج ولا على المريض حرج ولا ولا على أنفسكم ما تكلم من بيوتهم وبيوت أبائكم وبيوتهم هاتهم وبيوت إخوانكم. There's no harm for the blind, for the paralyzed, and the ill of uh, or for yourself if without formal permission you eat from your own homes or from the homes of your fathers or your mothers or your brothers or your sisters or your paternal uncles or your paternal aunts your maternal uncles your maternal aunts the home for which you possess the keys in the homes of your friends meaning you may eat freely from these homes and uh, when you know that the owners will not take objection right so you know like you go to your aunt's house you go to your uncle's house you know you know like you're probably just taking a bag of chips you know they're not going to really care but that's the last thing there's no harm for you there's no harm um you go eating, you're eating at your house you know unless okay like i don't know maybe your your, your mom said you don't touch this or something but you can eat anything at home. You just eat. Um, you go to your aunt's house or something. So Allah saying, there's no sin. You don't have to go ask him permission. Oh, can I get this? Can I get that? You're you about to drink water. Can I drink water? No. Just eat, freely go eat there. Um, and then Allah says, Laysa alaykum Laysa alaykum Ta'kulu jami'ana wa There's no harm if you collect collectively or individually. When you enter any home, then then greet yourself, those Muslims in the house, with the with salam, with prayer, which is a prayer, right? That is that has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is blessed and pure. And thus, that's Allah. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the ayat, the verses to you, so that you may understand. 
انما المؤمنون الذين امنوا بالله ورسوله واذا كانوا معه على امر جامع لم يذهبوا حتى يستأذن حتى يستأذنوا ان الذين يستأذنون اولئك الذين يؤمنون بالله ورسوله فاذا استأذنوا كربعض شان فذل لما شئت منهم واستغفر لهم الله ان الله غفور رحيم ذم امي ادوس وبليف ان الله سبحانه وتعالى صلى الله عليه وسلم ان وان دي ار وذ هيم ان اي كولكتيف كومباين كوميونيتي افورت دي دو نوت ديبارت انتل دي هاف سوت انتل دي دي ليف فروم هيم Verily, those who seek, the those who want to leave from you, yes, I do not go like that. You mean Allah or Rasul? Those who want to leave before leaving are those who believe in Allah and His Rasul. So when they seek, when they want to leave from you, and they have to do some affairs, of they have to go to, they have to attend to some of their affairs, then permit them, uh, let them, those who you please, and seek Allah's forgiveness for them. Verily, Allah is the most forgiving and most merciful. Right when they are in, obviously when they when they are together, when when they are in collective, when they are together, when the believers are with with Allah and His Rasul, and they are with Him collectively, when they come, when they are together, an effort to do not, do not Allah Allah say, do not leave, do not depart until you have asked for permission. Right, those who seek for permission and who believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they they ask for permission, and they have they have to go and fulfill their affairs. So then. They may uh, they may leave obviously after after giving given permission from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the most forgiving and most merciful. Let the dua of the Rasul be in your mouth. Let the dua of the Rasul be in your mouth. Let the dua of the Rasul be in your mouth. Do not make the calling of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam among yourselves like you're calling to each other. Meaning when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calls any of you, you are obliged to respond and do not have the choice of ignoring the call, as you have when someone else calls you. You know, someone else calls you or something, or someone else your friend says something. Okay, it's fine, but. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is calling, then yeah you should go and answer the call. Allah certainly knows those of those of Munafiqin who secretly slip away from the gatherings of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَالْيَحْذِرِ لِنِي خَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ لَيْسُ مَعَ ذَوَانِ الْعَذِيمِ عَذَابٌ عَذِيمٌ And those who oppose who oppose the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم command, which comes from Allah, as you should you should be aware that this that some calamity or a great punishment will afflict them. ألا إن إله ما في السماء وترى قد يعنو ما أنتم عليه ويوم يرجعون إليه فينا بيم بما عملوا الله بكل شيء عليم ورلي الله سبحانه وتعالى belongs to Allah belongs to whatever is in heaven and earth and Allah certainly knows your condition on the day of the day shall return to him he will inform them of what they did Allah has knowledge of all things الحمد لله فينيش سورة نور the next سورة سورة فرقان الله سبحانه وتعالى talks about um about how who, Allah سبحانه how blessed he is and uh, Allah سبحانه talks about the bounties And uh, the creation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He created, and uh, He talks about the um, the re- reply that's given to the objection that we'll do, and uh, and the uh, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala consoles uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and and uh, about the details about the Allah's pious servants. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون العالمين نذيرا. Blessed indeed is the one, is the being who revealed the decided in the Quran, which is differentiated between right and wrong and halal and haram, and to his to his slave to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم so that he may be a warning to the universe. الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض ولم يتقل ولا ولم يكن له شيء في الملك ولم يكن له في الملك وخلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا. And blessed indeed is the one who who uh, the one who who belongs the kingdom the one who uh, belongs the kingdom and the, the heavens and the earth and who has not taken any son right and he has no partner in the kingdom and he has created everything and uh, perf- perfected them and, and ordained and everything in its exact manner وَتَخْلُو مِنْ دُونِهَا لِيَتَ اللَّهِ يَخْلُوكُنَ الشَّيْءَ وَمِنْ يَخْلُوكُنَ وَلَا يَمْلِكُنَ لِيَنْكُسِمْ بَرَّمْ وَلَا نَفْعَمْ وَلَا يَمْلِكُنَ مَوْتًا وَلَا حَيَاتًا وَلَا نُشُرًا besides him that go far adopt a deity who cannot create anything but have but have themselves been created they have no power to affect any harm No any benefit to themselves and do not have any power over life, death, or resurrection. وقال الذين كفروا إن هذا إلا فن افترى وعانوا عليه قوم آخرون فقد جاءوا ظلما وزورا. The kufar said this Quran is merely a lie that the Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has forged and made it up, in which other people, the meaning the learned Jews and the Christian scholars have assisted him to to compose. And they have indeed presented a grave injustice and lie. وقال وساطير الأولين كتابها فهي تمنع عليه بفرانة وأصيلة. They the kufar said about the Quran, the fables and the tales of the old man that he, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, has had written by others. He had written it by others, which are recited and dictated to him morning and evening. So these are the two appointed times of. Uh, so that's this. They start saying that oh, you know, he made it up. It's a fairy tale. The old 
people of the of the people in the past and the Sulasim had written it by others and you know he would recite it, he would dictate it. they start making this up Kufar. Say the one who knows the secrets of the heavens and the earth has revealed it for someone without this knowledge can never produce such a masterpiece, right? Certainly Allah certainly He has always been the most forgiving and most merciful. And in addition to this, they also say, what is the matter with this Rasul that he eats food and walks in marketplaces like an ordinary human? human. Why is an angel not sent to, to him, sent with him to be a warrior alongside him? Or why is the treasure not given to him? Or why does he not have an orchard from which he may eat? Allah did not allow Rasulullah right, to demonstrate to the people these miracles because they would have rejected them and thereby they will attract Allah's immediate punishment, right? The way how the other nations were also um uh they were also destroyed. So not satisfied with saying only this, the presses of Kufar say to the Muslims to prevent them from following Rasulullah they say, you are merely following a bewitched man. Look how they, they fabricate lies about you. So by, by doing this, they wonder, they further astray and will, will not find any road to guidance. Blessed the being who, if he will, he would have granted you better bounties than this uh, by the way of gardens beneath which were very slow and he would have made palaces for you. But however, Allah SWT did not do this it was because uh, Allah SWT did not think it was, it was unnecessary and it would have been unharmful for, it would have been harmful for them. However, nevertheless, and nevertheless, their main reason for rejecting the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu is that they reject Qiyamah and we have prepared the blaze Jahannam for those who reject Qiyamah. When a Jahannam will see them from a distance on the day of Qiyamah, it will be so intense that they will hear the roar of its fury and its crackling flames. When they are flung into a narrow place in Jahannam, when their heads and feet and shackles, they will cry out of destruction. Do not cry for only, only destruction, death today, but cry for many destruction. I mean, regardless of how much you wish for it, death will never come to you and you will have to, you will have to suffer here forever. Say, is this Jahannam better or the Jannah of eternity that those with taqwa have been promised? It shall be a reward and abode for them. That they uh, that they shall have whatever they desire and they will live there forever eternally and this is a promise that your Rabb has undertaken to fulfill and for which he should be asked do not forget that he have when they the mushikin together with those whom they worship besides Allah will be gathered together and Allah will ask did you lead these slaves of mine astray or did they themselves on their own deviate Far from the straight path. Then they would say, the, the gods will say, You are pure from having any partners. It was not befitting for us to take uh, to take as gods any friends besides you. But what happened was that you granted enjoyment, wealth, and comfort, luxury to their fathers until they became so engrossed in these things that they forgot to remember, and you were a destroyed nation. They, meaning your, your gods have denied what you have said, that you worship them for their pleasure. You will now neither be able to turn the punishment away nor receive any assistance. We shall inflict a, a, a tremendous punish, a, a big punishment a grave punishment on those of those who are oppressive and sinful. All the Anbiya that we sent before you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to, used to eat food and walk in the marketplaces because they're humans, which is, right, this is the order. Therefore, do not worry about the persistent taunts of the kuffar. 
because we have made some of you as trials a test for others and, and you have patience. Your Rabb is ever watchful. Alhamdulillah, we finish the 18th of Juz. So we will stop here for today. Um, would you please repeat ayah 89 and 90 of Surah Mu'minun? Eighty-nine and ninety. Say, uh, In Surah Mu'minun, so soon they will say, "Allah." They all soon they will say, "It all belongs to Allah." Only He has power. Say that how, how have you been bewitched? Meaning, despite realizing all of this, the only reason for your shirk must be that you have been afflicted by magic. So how how have you been bewitched? And ninety, uh, we have sent truth of the to them through the Ambiya but they are certainly liars by denying and they were told these things. What if the woman denied that she did the bad act, but the husband is swearing she did it? That's why I said if the woman, the husband does that four times. And then he said, Allah, the curse upon me. And then also the woman, she starts swearing that, okay, um, she starts swearing four times also. And then the fifth time she said, Allah, the wrath upon me. Then after when both of them they deny, both of them are, uh, the woman is rejecting and the, the, and the husband is saying, no, she did it. But the, uh, what the wife is denying, so then the both of them will be separated. They won't be, they won't be able to live together and their nikah will break basically and they will live separate. Uh, what is kitab again? So those Mukatab slaves, those slaves which uh, basically they they uh, they have a contract that I'll pay you basically I'll pay the owner ten thousand suppose five thousand dollars and uh, I'll be free. So the master is fine. Okay, the master says yes, give me five thousand dollars and you'll be free. So once the uh, once the slave gives five thousand dollars, then the master frees the uh, slave. So that's what's your kitab. Question, if an adulteress is not caught in her lifetime and neither does she admit to her sin to the judge, will just the suffice or does she have to publicly admit and get punished in this world? So obviously in terms of uh, to the judge, um, right now, obviously in the, in the time of the place we're living, right, there's no judge or anything like that in the court of law, Islamic Sharia. So that's why I said uh, she, um, she does toba. Inshallah, hoping that you be really sincere and you don't commit the action again. And uh, inshallah, hoping, hoping uh, that, you know, Allah SWT will forgive and Tawbah would suffice. You, you don't have to publicly admit and get the punishment and you don't have to get the penalty in this world. So if you, like I said, if you sincerely admit and you do Tawbah and you don't do the action again, then inshallah, yes. Uh, I'll be uh, you'll be forgiven do slaves pay for their freedom no not slaves uh, we, the question was what is kitaba the, so the kitaba the mukatab slaves or the kitaba that's what it is slaves just general right? Uh, if that's if the if the master agrees kitaba is when the slave and master come to an agreement then that okay with this amount with this sum of money you will attain freedom but if the master obviously doesn't want to agree that I don't want to free you, I just want to keep you as my slave, then there's no kitaba then, right? There's, so uh, then the slave cannot pay for uh, pay for freedom. So yes, do slaves pay for freedom? Yes, they do. But with the condition, with the contract, with the master, if the master agrees. Okay, inshallah, we'll end here for today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the righteous believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter us into Jannah and save us from the hellfire.
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم انك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء من الاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم انا نسالك رضاك وجنتك ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم انا نسالك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم انا نسالك العفو والعافيه في الدنيا والاخره ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم صلى الله على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين برحمتك يا رب الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين